Hey guys, have you ever been in this type of situation where you're trying to align a piece of music to a specific action, but you just can't get it right, even when you're trying to move it frame by frame? Well, all you gotta do is click on the burger menu beside the sequence tab, select show audio time units. This actually replaces the frames with time units, which allows you to move the audio file with more precision. Hey guys, this video is gonna be full of tips and features just like this that you probably didn't even know existed in Premiere Pro. Let's dive right in. Tip one, let's talk about audio transcribe. Now you probably already know that you can easily transcribe your voice from a text window in Premiere Pro using AI, but you have to do it every time you add a new audio, which can be quite time consuming. But guys, did you know that you could actually do it automatically? Just go to edit, preferences, and select transcription. Then enable automatically transcribe clips. Now Premiere Pro will literally automatically transcribe every piece of audio that you bring into the sequence. Just make sure to set the transcription preference to only clips in sequence. Otherwise, Premiere Pro will transcribe literally every audio clip that you import, which might slow things down unnecessarily. Number two, kickstart Premiere Pro. If you already use Premiere Pro, you probably already know that you often need to clear the cache after a project is done. But what if you forget to clear the cache and then Premiere Pro crashes and refuses to start? Well, all you need to do is start Premiere Pro again and press and hold Alt during the Premiere Pro splash screen. And a window will appear from where you'll be able to clear the cache, which will get Premiere Pro started. What's even better is you can also choose to temporarily disable third-party plugins in case you install any kind of plugins which aren't actually compatible with Premiere Pro and are causing Premiere Pro to crash as well after launching. Number three, we'll call it media scaling. Now, if you're working on a 4K timeline and you want to import a 1080 clip into the timeline, you literally need to rescale each new clip every time you import them, which honestly wastes a lot of time. But there's a faster and a more automatic way to do it. Just go to edit, preferences, media, and change default media scaling to set to frame size. And there you go. Now, every time you import a 1080p clip into a 4K sequence, it will automatically expand the clip and it works the other way as well. Next tip we're gonna call quick snaps. If you're having trouble of having to align your graphics or texts to the center of your clip and you don't wanna to have to click the align to center button every time you add a new text or graphic, then all you gotta do is go to the view menu and enable snap in program monitor. Now you'll be able to snap anything to the center or anywhere just by dragging your clips. That's it. All right guys, here's our next tip. We're gonna be talking about Mogarts. We've all used Mogarts in Premiere Pro. We know that they can be painfully slow. Well, I don't want this solution to scare you. I wanna start off by just saying, guys, using actually After Effects instead of Premiere Pro isn't as scary as you think, and you really shouldn't let that fear of using After Effects hold you back. There's a really, really unintimidatingly easy way to jump into After Effects and then return right back into the safety of Premiere Pro. And here's how. Right click on your clip in Premiere Pro and select replace with After Effects composition. This will open up After Effects and create a linked composition. After applying your effects, save your project and return to Premiere Pro where your clip will be updated without the lag of Mogarts. You see, the reason why we use Mogarts most of the time is because we're scared to use After Effects. But I just wanna drill that out of you right now. Mogarts can be useful, but they can also be really annoying. Sometimes it's better just to use After Effects. And guys, one way to make After Effects even more or less intimidating is actually using template packs for effects. They can let you exploit the power of After Effects in literally seconds without the need to be a talented VFX artist. One really popular pack that our team actually built is the ePRISM preset pack for After Effects. These presets give you beautiful lens distortion effects that actually mimic in-camera prism effects, adding a unique and cinematic look to your videos. Check it out in the description below. Now there's nothing more terrifying than to realize that one of your main audio clips is missing from the timeline. Maybe you accidentally deleted it or got it replaced by the sound effects clip, but there's actually a neat way to get the audio back. Just select the clip whose audio is missing, then go to sequence and click on match frame. Alternatively, you can also press F on your keyboard to do the same. Once you find the clip back, select the audio waveform and drag it under your clip. Next tip is called subtitle animation. 
guys, did you know that Premiere Pro lets you create subtitles with ease now that we have the audio transcribe feature? But you can't really do a lot to edit those subtitles. Well, guess what? There's a neat little trick that you can use to animate subtitles just like any other piece of text. All you gotta do is select all the subtitles that you need animating, then go to the graphics and titles menu, then select upgrade caption to graphic. Easy. Next tip, we'll call filter effects. If you're using a lot of effects on the same clip, it can be quite difficult to find the keyframed effect to which you wanna make changes to. To make your life easier, go to this funnel shaped filter button and select show only keyframed properties. This will hide all the effects which don't have any keyframes, which will make it easier to find the desired effect. Next tip is called hide the clutter. Speaking of hiding things, if you're tired of looking through clips through the labyrinth of files in the project files tab, you can easily hide all the clips that you won't be needing anymore and keep the ones which are more frequently needed. Just select the files that you don't need and right click on one of them and click hide. To get these hidden files back, simply right click and select view hidden. Additionally, if you have a lot of unused imported clips, you can go to the edit tab, select remove unused, and this helps reduce a lot of the clutter that keeps growing over the duration of your edit. Guys, that's it.